Lost in Saturday Morning. I am Noelle Harlow Lagrasso. I am joined by Danny J in our studio outside of Philadelphia. Hi, Dan. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lost in Saturday Mornings. And we got a big good one for you. Uh, there's other people on the line here, though. Noelle, let them know who's here. Mr. Mystery is with what us. What is going on? We have Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually is just um, but it's okay because he'll pop in and out. You might not be able to see him because his Wi-Fi stinks, but he's there in the background. This is mystery. So vo voicing Arnold Schwarzenegger today will be Nick G. So every time we say Arnold, we'll wait for Nick G and he'll come in. All right. That's, yeah. today's, that's today's game. Yeah, that's the plan. So today we are on the last thank you Lord of our series of our Batman series from the eighties and nineties. We are going to be viewing the tongue tied. There's Nick. Hi, Nick. I'm back. Hi, Nick. Nick G. Nick G's back. So we're going to be reviewing Batman and Robin. This is the film George Clooney called a career wake up and empire magazine voted the worst film ever. Are you guys ready? <laughs> <laughs> So let's get started first off by saying this movie's main focus was just to sell toys. Yes. A hundred percent to sell toys. The movie Warner Brothers took the pre-production of the movie to the toy company before Joel Schumacher ever got to pre-production. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. that, Nick and Nick's like, yeah, that happened. Yeah. He was that even so yeah, that's that's what occurred there. Um, part of the film itself was actually created by the toy company. They designed the Batmobile. Um, the super cartoony colored look was all from the cartoon companies, not from Joel Schumacher, not from Warner Brothers. All created for a big long infomercial to sell toys, and it failed. Man. And the funny thing is, too, like when Kenner took over. Um, after Batman, after the first Batman, when Kenner took over after, I forget what the, the toy, I don't know if it was Toy Biz or whatever the original toy company was, which they did a poor job with the figures and all, the original Batman set, and then Kenner took over and he made like a really cool looking Batman um, toy line. They were selling pretty well, and it seems like this scenario, this time around, it was almost more to sell, not just the regular toys, but more so the Happy Meal toys and stuff that was like almost like the crap toys. Like we, we want to cater to the crap toys for some reason. Yeah, it was like um, that that big uh, restaurant tie-in was like a big freaking deal on this thing. Um, I want to welcome everybody that is in the chat. They're saying, hey, Nick G. What's up? Nick is pretty over on the brand. He just pops up on whatever he feels like coming into. <laughs> Nick is our, for those of you just joining us here, Nick is our Arnold, oh, he popped out again. Nick is our Arnold Schwarzenegger today, since he is the king of voices. There he is. Again. Um, so let's start off with casting like we usually do. We have um, George Clooney as Batman. Now, how did that even come about? Val Kilmer was a piece of shit. And apparently he pulled out at the last minute, but Joel Schumacher hated his guts after the first Batman. So he had to find a second one. Do you know how Joel Schumacher found George Clooney to be Batman? Anybody? Well, well, how I picture it is like when they're writing like a script for who they want to be Batman, they just lay it out in front of the director and he's just like, doesn't like anyone. He's like, how about George Clooney? <laughs> and then it just happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got an idea. No, Nick, I choose number three. <laughs> it was almost like that, Nick. What he did was he had a picture sitting there of George Clooney from um, from Dust Till Dawn. Remember that movie, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he starts doodling the Batman cowl on George Clooney, and he goes, "Well, that looks good. Let's get him." That's it. That's how he picked him. So literally, just what Nick said. I got an idea. How about George Clooney? was really what happened. He just drew me like, you know what? He looks pretty good in that. Somebody called when, when, when no one else can fit your needs, George Clooney. Yeah, it's George Clooney. George Clooney used yeah. to be one of those, yeah. you had him on your that, sitcom, it was the end of your sitcom deals. Well, At that's that all time, <laughs> George Clooney was so huge though. And think about it for a second. We're bringing in like huge star power into Batman and Robin. George Clooney is such a big time box office seller. He's fresh off of his sitcom runs with ER 
and with uh, if I go back, he was on the, what was that show with Mrs. Garrett, uh, Facts of Life, you know, and stuff like that. But George Clooney was the man at that point. He was the man. He was but, like a true star, Dan. Like he he was on those shows, but he wasn't like that breakout movie star yet. He was no, like, not yet. Yeah, he was like that big TV, sexy TV hunk guy. And he right. was ER, and ER was a Warner Brothers property, so it was easy to get him. And exactly. the women loved him. In the 90s, the women were all over George Clooney. So <laughs> he was, uh, right. I, I just got an RIP Mrs. Garrett in here. Yeah, <laughs> rest in peace, Mrs. Garrett. Um, so that's how he got picked. But the other person in consideration is along the same lines of what Dan was saying is uh, David Duchovny as Batman from X-Files. Oh. Just because X-Files. I put him in there and he probably would have made a, Look-wise, he would have made a pretty good Batman, I think. I think he had the facial structure for it. Because Clooney did not fill out the outfit, if you notice. Clooney's face, his cowl didn't wrap around him at all. He was he had a very long face. A little empty. He looked, yes, like, he, he, looked, well, he looked like a little kid if you wore like an adult-sized Darth Vader helmet. Yeah, he looked like a kid in a costume. That's what? so funny, but... Went quiet all of a sudden. What was that? It was weird. Everything just went quiet. Everybody, everybody was like, a moment of silence for Mrs. Garrett. Yeah, uh, that was a moment of silence for Mrs. Garrett, everybody. Moment of silence. So you're saying in the chat, David Duchovny would not have done much better than George Clooney. I don't think so. They were trying to get big stars for this because the big pull to the, um, to the Batman was these big stars at the time in superhero. Mm -hmm. That was the, the pool, like you're oh my God, Jack Nicholson is an award-winning actor. Here he is as the Joker. Like, that was the big, like, you know. Well, cool I know the thing like is, that. too, here's the pull. To try and get an award-winning actor with less than <clears throat> admirable chops as far as the writing is concerned, how are you going to pull it off? You saw it with Batman Forever where you have an actor like Tommy Lee Jones, who by far is not Shakespeare, but he's a good actor. You know, I like him in a lot of his stuff. But he was horrible in that movie, and I got to blame the writing partially for that because it's like, all right, he's written to be very over the top, and, like, it was forced. And I think if – just bottom line, forget about who's Batman, who's Robin, who's everybody in there. If you just turn the, the, the screen off and listen to the dialogue, almost like a radio play, it was horrible. It was a horrible movie. Very and the, Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. And I think, like you said, you could have had Patrick Stewart in there. It wouldn't have made a fucking difference. No. Because Batman and Robin was destined to fail. It really was. It really was. When you have a movie that's written just to sell something. Now, the other choices for um, Poison Ivy, which Uma Thurman, or Uma Thurman, or however you say her name, uh, was yeah, Demi Moore and Sharon Stone. Who was the first one? Demi Moore. Oh, Demi Moore. Demi Moore was. Oh yeah, I could have seen that. I could have seen Demi Moore. Sharon Stone. I I don't know what? about. Um, I would have. <laughs> what was the third one? Uh, it's coughed. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> it was. Demi Who's the third Moore one? Sharon Sharon Stone. Sharon Stone. They this both was what been for. Uh... For Poison Ivy. Oh, uh, Poison Ivy. Jay wants yeah. to know why she talked like she was straight out of the 40s. Uma. Uh, the well, thing, uh, why she did that? <laughs> I think the thing is, is that they were trying to stick with what the original one was. That The part that Dan and I liked was that you couldn't tell what the time period was. It could be yesterday or it could be the 1940s. But it didn't work when you add in all these neon colors and bullshit. Then, yeah. you, then you think it's futuristic. Ooh. And then you have a cyborg from the future come back to save John Connor. Like, what the heck? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much, yeah, that's it. Like, it, that happen in the movie? That was, uh, that was a different Arnold movie night. Oh. <laughs> 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 and Nick is just back to this dark circle again, which is just ridiculous. 
Mr. Mystery. It's not the circle, man. It's it's the actor behind it, which is all me. right. I, I I agree. Thank you, Black Scorpion. Not the circle. <laughs> it's the actor behind it. There you go. Actually, the mask is from like an old GI Joe thing. Oh, jeez. I uh, have it somewhere. We're we're to Nick's part now. This is this is where Nick is going to yeah. shine. Uh, real quick though, with Nick's black dot, he reminds me of uh, the thing from two thousand one Space Odyssey. How the computer? How the computer? That's what he reminds me of. Wait, isn't that the freaking <laughs> robot? It has like the red eye, and it's like all like Butler Creek. Yeah, yeah. That's hey, good. Nick, real quick, in a real low voice, say good morning, Dave. Good morning, Dave. <laughs> oh my God, it's perfect! It's he perfect. Even see it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that, Dave. <laughs> oh my God! Now we have our we now we have our own bad computer pal on Lost in Saturday Morning, and he's never even seen the movie. Um, do I need to change my picture to like just a red dot now? Do it. I say do it. I'll do it later. Say <laughs> say good morning, Dan. <laughs> good morning, um, Dan. <laughs> Jeez. Everybody's going to tell. Um, Anthony Hopkins <laughs> was considered for Mr. Freeze. Uh, no. No. I couldn't see that. No. You know who I could have seen as Mr. Freeze? It would have been if, and considering the writing not being campy, would have been, um, oh, God, what is his name? The guy, he was in Star Trek, uh, where Kirk and Picard met each other, the bad guy, his name is, he's the British actor. I'm trying Come to. Come on, you know. All I can not, think of is. Come I don't Roddy watch McDale. Star Trek, so I have no idea. Not Roddy McDale. Hold on a second. It's not Nick, Roddy go McDowell. on your phone. Are you on your, oh, Nick's on his phone. Nick's on Noel, go on your phone. I have my computer next to me, too. Cast of Star Trek, uh, what is it? Star Trek, uh, Connections or what was that movie? Oh geez, I think it's. I think I'm thinking of Roddy McDale. Okay, hold on. I'm I'm all, I'm looking on my computer. It's just easier. All right, start where Kirk and Picard met each other. I think it's Star Trek Connections or yeah. yeah hold on. And uh, the show took a complete halt for this. <laughs> oh please, why our computer Hal is looking up the answer. <laughs> It's Star Trek Generations, Jay says. It's Gen Star Trek Generations. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. It's Jay. Hold on. It's Jay. I it? can't find that, Dan. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm joking. Hold on. How can't find that, Dan? I don't know if you heard him. <laughs> and who, who's the... All right, hold on. Let me see. I think Looking it's Roddy. for uh, the cast of it. That's just easier. You see Roddy I think McDowell? it's Roddy McDowell. That's what I think. Pardon? Roddy McDowell, the guy from Planet of the Apes. Oh, Dr. J. It's okay. Is that Dr. No. <laughs> well, we've just fallen into a no, hole. No, no, no. Malcolm, Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. That's, that's. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Malcolm McDowell? Uh, I've never seen Star Trek, so I don't even know. I don't even know what I mean. Star Trek after. Generations cast in Google. Uh. <laughs> I gotta get this confirmed. I think it's Malcolm McDowell's who I'm talking about. Okay. Somebody in chat, look at this. Yeah, yeah. He's the uh, old dude with the glasses. Yes, Malcolm McDowell. Yeah. Yeah, it's Malcolm McDowell. I think he would have been a phenomenal Mr. Freeze. Yeah, I could see it. I could see that. But do you that know? Been my, that would have been my pick. Do you know who Mr. Freeze was? Uh. Movie? Uh, 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 what? What? <laughs> who was? <laughs> who was Mr. Freeze? It's your big chance. Go for it. The Arminator. Yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, he's got weapons. Why? He's got stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Arnold was in this movie. Do you know that he made twenty-five million dollars just to have thirty minutes on screen to, in this movie? What? That's great money. 
Yeah, he made $25 million payday. He's only on 30 minutes or so screen time. He was the top build because he was the biggest star. Say, everybody chill. He was probably the he was probably the biggest character in that whole movie, like the size of his costume. Well, the costume was a problem. The costume was hard to get in and out of. He had they had to paint him blue. It was extremely heavy. And while he was filming, he found out he had to have open heart surgery. He had this heart valve problem and he's carrying around this heavy costume and he tried to keep it a secret. So they kept trying to stick his body double in this heavy costume because he, he could have died filming this movie because the suit was so heavy and he had a bad heart valve. So he ended up sneaking off after the film and secretly his kids didn't even know he had heart surgery. He secretly went and had heart surgery and it failed. So when he was going around trying to promote the movie, he couldn't even breathe. They had to do a second. Did he have like a zipper? I don't know. I don't know. Probably. I would assume he had something like that because. It leaves a scar like that. They patch it like weirdly when they do it. What would Arnold Schwarzenegger sound like recovering from surgery? Jeez. That's going to be a hard one. I think he would be like, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, it hurts so can't believe it. I have to be Mr. Freeze. I can't even believe in the thing. Uh, what if they had to fly him in a helicopter to a trauma center? What would he say? I believe you mean, I believe you mean Chopper. Yeah, what would he say? <laughs> this is too much. No. Go, Give, me <laughs> <laughs> Give me to the Chopper. <laughs> oh, heart attack in the Chopper. <laughs> Nick, you're the perfect addition as Arnold Schwarzenegger to the cast. I am going to suggest Nick be Mr. Freeze. I think Mr. I think I think Mr. Mystery should have been Mr. Freeze. Mr. Mystery. Nick, why are you Mr. Mystery? I have no idea. It's just something came back up with like 2000, like 13. You're like the Mr. Unknown, isn't that what your gimmick is? The Mr. Yeah. Unknown. That's you. Isn't Mr. Mystery? I wanted, it, I wanted it to be Mr. Fahrenheit, but my friend stole that. Mr. Mystery is, what did you say, Dan, a band from the 80s? No, isn't Mr. Mystery, uh, well, that's Mr. Mister, but yeah. Mr. Mystery, wasn't that the guy from the Mystery Men? Uh, oh, it was well, terrible. actually, my name is Mr. Unknown, so you're not even, like, getting it right. We're not even right. close to what you actually, you're Mr. Unknown. Yeah, yeah, right, Mr. Unknown. Mr. Unknown, I'll have to make Mr. Unknown t-shirts for you, Nick. It'll be <laughs> a black dot. There's a black dot, and then comic book letters, Mr. Unknown. Mr. Unknown with one black dot. Oh my it's God. It's going to be like you sell hats. It's going to be a top hat. It's going to have a question mark on it. Top hat with a question mark. I like it. Yeah, because you always wear top hats. I forgot about that. Crazy. So, okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ar, as, oh, uh, I can't even do it. <laughs> I can't do it like you. That's why. You started, you know, you started to tell me with freaking heart problems. What the heck? <laughs> 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 okay, so the so so we have Arnold is your top build. He's only in the movie thirty minutes. Yeah, yep. Silverstone as Batgirl, and they broke balls about her weight, like from the beginning of the film. They claim they cut parts of the film out because she gained weight. The art department was so nasty; they drew fat pictures of her and passed them around set. Can you believe that? That's crazy. Because you know what, Alicia Silverstone, I think at that. And at that point, I think she was at the end of her 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and she was like, when she was in that first movie uh, where she's like um, the runner in the, I forget what the movie was called, but it was really good where she, uh, she likes to do, but she's young and like, she's barely legal and she like gets the dude in trouble because she starts messing with him. And uh, like, everybody was like, Oh my God, Alicia Silverstone, this chick is so hot. She's so sexy. And then she did like Clueless, I think. Clueless was right before this. Yeah. And then she did this and you're like, all right, I could see that. She's, she's once again, popular face, much like George Clooney. We got someone that's over there like, you know, we're, we're going to load this up with, with brand faces. So this way we can really pump out this movie. And um, her lines were horrible. Her acting, she's not a great actress at all. I think she really needs to have a part. Like the clueless part was good for her, but I don't think anything else was. Um, 
she needed to play that like kind of dippy, you know. Yeah. And and let's get into real quick. I mean, like, because we got to really get into it. The enormous amount of rewrites of character origins and stuff like that that happened in this movie. Um, in this movie, you notice now Commissioner Gordon is not making an appearance. I don't think. Does he make an appearance in this? I don't think he does. I don't think he does. I think it's the only one he doesn't. It's the one he doesn't, right? He, he's not in this one. And, you know, uh -huh. everybody knows that Barbara Gordon, who is Batgirl, is the daughter of Commissioner Gordon. Well, in this one, she's just Barbara, and she is the niece of Alfred Pennyworth in this movie, which we're like, where the fuck did this happen? And who the hell is Peg? <laughs> who is that shit? Like, just out of nowhere. Oh, this is my niece. No, you're not. Where's Commissioner Gordon? Yeah. Y'all didn't feel like Peg, Commissioner Gordon? That was a uh, uh, why are you British like everybody else? Yeah, like, if that's your niece, why? I mean, I don't know. Did he pay you to say that? Did he just not want to come into work today? Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm sick of this job. Batman can't even do it right. He keeps letting people out of prison, letting them escape, and we have to go on this huge goose chase and all this bull. Yeah. <laughs> it's the commissioner's day off. But yeah, literally, he's like with Chief O'Hara, and he's off playing golf somewhere. But the thing is... <laughs> You know, but it's like, you know, now she's like this anti-British British person. She has no accent at all. Uh, she still sounds like the Valley Girl from Clueless. Um, and uh, she's just there's there. And there's and if you really in all seriousness, there is no character development for her at all, even though she's a main character in the in the, the novels and in the folklore. She's a main character, but there's absolutely no, no background for her whatsoever. She just happens to show up, and she we don't know anything about her. We don't know why she's tenacious. We don't know why she doesn't have an accent. We don't know any of this stuff, and it's one of those things where that's annoying in itself, and it's distracting to the movie. She, um, yeah, the, the, there's a lot of things in this movie that they just, like, squeezed camp in our chat was saying that, um, like, the bat credit card that's expiration forever. Like, some little campy stuff like that really took away. Yeah. Um, plus the age gap he's saying between yeah, Bart and Bart. That, yeah. And it's true, though. Like, like, she looks like she's potentially 16 years old. And it goes back to last week's episode. She's probably the age that Robin should have been. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? She's probably the age that Robin should have been, and Robin looks like he's about five years older than her. And the other <laughs> thing about this film is they like they cut parts out just because they wanted continuity with her weight. But the problem is the film had shitty continuity. Like I'll give you a prime example: you saw fighting, and you saw scenes with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Chris O'Donnell as well, right. fighting and everything else. Nick, can you give me a little Arnold, please? No. Thank you. Um, you saw them on the set. They, they were never on the set together. They never performed together at all. They talked to each other like on the set, like hanging out, but they right. never were, they never performed together. But of course, they're together in the thing. So they had like a lot of scenes were filmed choppy. Um, talk um, about the uh, about the costumes. Um, George Clooney's bat suit was so ridiculously hard to get in and out of. He peed in it. He didn't even get up to go to the bathroom because it was so hard to get him out of it. He just like pissed in the bat suit, which is all right. Let's get back to the set. I finished my business. They didn't even leave the set. No, he didn't even leave the set. He said, Sell that bitch on eBay. <laughs> Couldn't they put like a hose in it or something like? <laughs> no, there was nothing, Nick. He took a piss in there. That's it. He said he. This that's such an analogy for this home movie. George Clooney pissed in the bat suit and on. The Bat movie and franchise. That's pretty much like the entire gist of, of this film. They start selling bat diapers after that. Yeah, you think the thing is though, I'll tell you, the movie itself is campy. So oh, I, yeah, it is. Arnold Schwarzenegger fell right into the camp. You know what I mean? 
Like, yeah. in other words, the movie was campy. His character was campy. He played it campy. I think that was all consistent. I think the consistency problem, besides the rewrites of Barbara, was George Clooney. I don't think George Clooney played the part correctly. I thought he was a half decent Bruce Wayne because he is he is like a, a playboy type of guy, um, but he was not Batman. Okay, and it goes back to what I said last week. You're 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 acting for two parts, not one. You know, Batman and Bruce Wayne. You know, although are the same person, are not the same character, and therefore you have to be able to play two different roles and he did not do that in this movie yeah it's like we were talking about previously could you have somebody separate play bruce wayne and batman if you use george clooney as bruce wayne he can pull it off but he um, can't, you, you could have had somebody separate play it and it may have maybe happened a little better than it did you know now they're oh. mentioning bat nipples on the on the chat. Yeah, bat nipples. I was just looking at the chat. Bat, uh, George Clooney could not fill out the bat nipples, and that was the problem. With I don't think should, anybody. But they were some. You guys should just nipples. start selling shirts, and it just be a black shirt, and then just have two dots like right here. Oh, the bat nipple shirt. Yeah. We need a bat nipple shirt. No, we should do a Mister Unknown black dot shirt with two nipples on it. That's it, Nick. <laughs> You're going to have a bat nipple shirt. That's the shirt. He gets a Mr. Unknown bat nipple shirt. That's what you're going to get. Oh, but, uh, but now we're talking about, we, we're going to amp it up. We have some close-ups of the bat nipples. We have close-up of bat crotches. We have close-up of bat asses. We even get a little bit of bat girl's cooch on this show. And we get bat cooch. And, um, you know, for a porno, this would have been a great setup. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? But like the bat job. About, um, you know, they it goes back to what I said last week too. Adam West and Burt Ward could have jumped in these roles and it would have been just as okay. It would have been better because it would have been expected to be that camp. Exactly. Exactly. They were successful at it. George Clooney not so successful at it. That cute. The and then we get the side thing. We get the side thing. If you want to really kill this show completely, the only consistent person in this entire movie is Alfred, and this motherfucker's dying. Okay, he's dying in the movie. He's dying in the movie. We're like, please, everything sucks, and you're killing him too. Why is this happening? You're killing the one constant in the entire movie. The entire movie. To be honest, I think they should have like let Alfred live and be like, well. Looks like Alfred's the new hero the city needs. Alfred is Batman, which yeah. actually happened in the old Batman. Alfred yeah. did play Batman one time. Yeah. Well, that's like the whole thing where people talk about the Joker and the Batman being the same person. Yes. Yeah. And and it would have been great to have a close up of like Alfred's face sticking out of the cowl, all old and wrinkly. And At least he would have filled the mask. He would. <laughs> <laughs> George Clooney must have a small head. Like you can't fill out the back cow unless you draw. No, it. the top of his head's probably like flatter than most, so it sinks. So his eyes are like showing like this. Like this, when my fingers yeah. are is a mask line. The only thing was too, his costumes, especially towards the end, they looked like action figures. That's they do. That's what it really. When you talk about the toy line tie-in. He looked like it was a it was a ice series Batman. Uh, it looked like a Fisher Price toy. Yeah, he had that like that. That's the thing you can tell this was a toy company hand in it because everything looked like it. Jay says he's dying and he's still doing all the work around the house. Poor Alfred, dying of know, right? This poor son of a bitch. He can't even get a break. He's got to sweep up shit. You got Chris O'Donnell, who's like a 40-year-old fucking 20-year-old. In <laughs> you know what I mean? He's in there do, doing God knows what else. You know, Clooney's walking around with back credit cards, and Barbara's walking around trying to hack into people's computers. Oh, you know shoot. That know? just reminded me. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? And she, like I said, there is no introduction. We don't know if she was – I mean, Alfred was dying. He could have been delusional. She goes said, yeah. I'm your niece. 
I'm your niece. And he's like, oh, she must be my niece. What, what were you going to say <laughs> next that reminded you? You had a complete meltdown over there. I was thinking of two things earlier. Um, but this one I'm going to say because it's more connected with the whole bat credit card thing. Yeah. I was thinking, like, you ever see, like, those, like, God, um, you ever see, like, those play sets they have, like, the little Mc McDonald's sets, and you'd have, like, the register, and it had the credit card. That's how I oh, picture yeah, it. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. The, sec <laughs> the second thing I was thinking of, right? Do you remember that uh, Simpsons episode where Homer became extremely buff, and they gave him a movie as a superhero, like a Superman? But he became fat, so they had scenes where it was him being like super buff, then it was him fat again. Yeah, That's yeah. how I picture it with Arnold. Yeah. Like the stunt double, then Arnold. Yeah. I love it. Oh, they're saying, and he made Barbara her own bat suit while still dying. Like he's even. Well, I know. Like this motherfucker is the only guy who's doing any work in this movie, you know, and he's dying, you know. Nick, maybe dying. the episode of The Simpsons was based on this movie with cutting yeah. scenes because of weight issues. Maybe that was a good tie-in, Nick. Good tie-in because I think I think I think Batman and Robin would have probably been a better movie had it been produced by the uh, by uh, Seth MacFarlane and Family Guy. Agreed. Yes, <laughs> I'll agree with that. The yeah, Family Guy, Batman, and Robin would have been phenomenal. Well, this movie actually had a good first weekend at the box office because it did 42 mil. But by and never mouth, again. Yeah. <laughs> by <laughs> mouth, it literally, it literally killed it. Uh, everybody coming out. Even come, this movie's, let's be honest, this movie is way better though than like Pluto and Ash. Oh, you always want to talk about Pluto and Ash and that, that movie's terrible. I know. It's amazing uh, that this movie didn't get a Razzie. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like like Catwoman did. Tons. This is the only Batman movie then not to get any Oscar nods at all for anything, which is kind of sad because this movie was the first movie to use CGI for stunt work. Um, and you think that that technology would have gotten some kind of nod, but because the movie yeah. was so bad, it was completely ignored um, as far as like any recognition. It got Razzies, Alicia Silverstone got a Razzie. She won oh, for- did she? Okay, okay. And then yeah, she it didn't win. Probably was the worst actress in this movie. Yeah, and it did, and you know what? If somebody's picking on you every single day about your weight, you're probably not gonna be the best actress. If people are passing fat pictures around of you, you're probably gonna be a little self- That's like really, like when you think about it, very unprofessional. Yeah, the whole art department was doing it. And that, that to me is a real turnoff. Um, recently. I mean, she was a, not a fat girl by any means at all. She wasn't a supermodel. She was a short little girl who had a, like a, a round face. She had a, she's a curvy figure. Yeah. And she was a sexy girl. Alicia Silverstone, very sexy. Very, very sexy. But um, especially with that little underbite she has and stuff like that, or overbite, I forget what bite she has, but... Um, get the bite. <laughs> the bite. The bite, sexy as shit. I have a little. Like, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an overbite. You get it from but, me. Um, <laughs> she's a horrible actor. So, um, there was supposed to be another movie in this line, which obviously got canceled. It was. Um, gonna be yeah, wait, wait. Yes. I don't mean to. I don't mean to cut you off, but. I was going to say, during the whole uh, Alfred thing, I was like, I picture it goes from, like, a fight scene with Batman, and it shows, like, a black title screen. It's like, meanwhile, with Alfred, it's just, like, him slowly dying. It's like the common man who has to work for a rich dude who only knows his secret is dying, and Batman's just sitting there not knowing or doing anything to, like, try to help this old man who's trying to keep going to help his freaking... You know, freaking Batman and all that. And I'm like ringing the bell for Alfred and Alfred's right. dying, but he's like trying to reach that that planted Coke because it's a, a product tie-in and he's like trying to deliver this Coke to Batman. Hey, Rocky. He's like, Master Bruce! Alfred, where's my Coke? He's like, Master Bruce, I did it! <laughs> he's using one finger to pull himself along the rug like this. Why is that? Why is Nick G's camcorder trying to get away from him? I don't know. Nick, now we only see like 
Your forehead. Your forehead. Like you have to pull it down a little bit. It looked like it looked like it was slowly trying to back away from him. His, his kid. Oh, I'm holding. I'm holding my phone because it's charging. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. That's why it's all shaky. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nick, we'll get well, you. Get get away. Nick, Mama, get you stand. It'll be all right. So they, no. uh, the next Bat <laughs> movie was supposed to be Batman Unchained. Okay. And um, this is the one where Joel Schumacher was going to bring Nicolas Cage in as the Scarecrow. Oh, God forbid. There's a huge problem, though, with the movie in general trying to sell toys mostly. Like, you have to have, like, a really, really good movie to be able to do that, such as, like, the Avengers movie, the first one, right? right. They were able to do that because it was such a good movie. See, like, with most uh, toys, like Cartoon Network, for example, they do it, you know, we talked about this last time, um, usually when they show a show, it's to sell the toy line. Well, they used to at least. I don't know what to do now. Same thing, merchandise usually. But with like the movie, it was so bad that like it was only good for like the first like mom. You said the, in the box office it was good or whatever. Yeah. And then yeah. I don't feel like it was like good to sell toys afterwards because it just wasn't good. Like not everyone watched it again, really. Well, and you know what though too, the reason why a child wants a toy from a movie is because they want to relive or imagine themselves in these adventures that they're seeing on the big screen. And the movie itself has to be a good movie in order for me as a child to want to do that. If the movie sucks, obviously I'm not going to want to be involved. I'm not going to give a shit you know, about being Mr. Freeze or whatever. Notice that we've talked this whole time. I don't know how long we're on. Uh, we're on for a good amount of time. We haven't even talked about Bane yet. Bane's in this fucking movie, people. And <laughs> he's a nonverbal, looks like, literally looks like a balloon. He does not even look like a real person at all. He's a balloon guy. And he's like this. Um, just horrible. Uh, Visually, I guess, cartoon-wise, he looked the closest in character to anybody in the comic books, uh, aside from uh, Poison Ivy, but um, just a horrible rendition of him as well. Uh, but he's, a, he's reduced to being a henchman. A, yeah, he's like nobody in this cartoon. Uh, and wait, what, which, which movie again? I'm sorry. We're in Batman and Robin. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> I just have to get an idea because I don't remember everything from the movie. Right, so I have right, to look right. up a picture. Nick didn't what? even know what movie we were talking about. He's just here for Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's what I he thought it was out in Costello Meet Frankenstein. Okay. <laughs> so about my pay, I, I played my part. No. <laughs> oh, you want your pay? I just took you to the Magic Kingdom the other day. There's your pay. There's your yeah, pay. I bought you a cheese pizza. There's your pay. <laughs> you bought me three days of McDonald's. There's your pay. Yeah, I you Uber yeah. Eats for McDonald's for three days. There's your pay. Nick, come on my, Nick, come on my end. There is no pay. <laughs> no pay. What's no right? pay on my end. I, I'm not getting paid. I do this shit 24-7. I'm up here so in PA. talking about the Bane that doesn't talk. He just goes, <laughs> Yes. Yes. He's the brute. He was. And, and. He's like this. He's almost like Thug Number One and Thug Number Two. Remember in Adam West's Batman, where and I forget what villain had him. It might have been either the Riddler, or it might even have been the Joker, where he had Thug One and Thug Two. That's it, it, I actually what? actually that sounds more like Two Face to me. Well, Two Face wasn't in the original Batman and Robin TV series from no, the sixties. Wasn't was he? But, um, the Riddler, uh, Penguin, the Penguin with Burgess Meredith, he had thugs as well. They usually were themely dressed to the part, but... Um, They're like sailors. Yeah, they look like sailors. Right, exactly. And it, it, that's what I got out of that. And it was the same because you're talking about this is a character who broke Batman's back, who almost destroyed the Batman, who caused... Other people have to pick up the mantle after so many years. And this character is reduced down to a, mo a mindless, voiceless thug in the movie. <laughs> Jay no says, part. Bane's trench coat and fedora. I can't even. And that's pretty much sums that up right there. Oh. Can't even.
So Joel Schumacher goes to Warner Brothers after this disaster of a movie. That was a hundred million dollar movie. Did not make the money back, obviously. The first weekend looked promising, and then everybody's like, oh my God, that sucks. Nobody went to see it. So he goes, listen, guys, let's do this revamp. Let's go back to Batman year one. And they were like, no, Joel, sorry, it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. And basically, Joel Schumacher becomes a, a, a punchline in the Batman history which he tried everything he could try to do the right thing by this batman it's not a trilogy what do you call it when it's four movies crap Shit. <laughs> crap. <laughs> crap so he couldn't say quadrilogy that. is what it is a quadrilogy quadrilogy well he quadrilled himself right out of a job <laughs> That was not good. It, it ended bad. He tried his best. He really wanted to do that Batman year one. So it killed off the Scarecrow movie. That didn't get made. Um, the only bright spot out of all of this was the soundtrack. The soundtrack killed mm -hmm. it. All your 90s. Nick, you're funny. And all your 90s uh, bands that like. Smashing Pumpkins, Goo Goo Dolls, Ju uh, Jewel, R. Kelly. Hey, the Iron R. Kelly and Batman peeing in his suit is just amazing. Is Batman this the musical. Was, was, this, was Kiss from a Rose from this one? No, that was from before. That was from Forever? Yeah, that's from Forever. Seals, okay. Kiss from a Rose, and then U2 was a lot of that soundtrack as well. Yeah. Um, this was uh, Smashing Pumpkins, the end, the beginning to the end, or whatever it was called. Um, yeah. And Blue had a song, and Goo Goo Dolls had a song, and R. Kelly peed his way up the charts. And um, then, you know, that was... And Batman peed himself. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Batman peed himself, and R. Kelly was on the soundtrack. There has to be some connection there. <laughs> yeah. I picture they're, like, getting ready for a fight thing, and Batman just sits there with, like, a blank look on his face, like, uh, what are you doing? All right, I'm done, let's do it. And just, like... It's just like trickle down his leg. When you're potty training your little kid and they always go and hide and peek around the corner when they're going in their diaper and you're going, I know what you're doing. I'm not going potty. That was George Clooney in the bat suit. He would hide behind the Batmobile and they'd be like, George, George, we need you on set. And he just peeks around the corner like, George, are you peeing in the bat suit? No. Imagine they smacked him on his nose every time he did it. No pissing in the bat suit. No, no. George. No. No, George. Rubbing his nose in the bat suit when he takes it off. George, did you do this? Did you? I picture like they try to sell the bat suit, like that suit from that movie, and they go, oh, you can still smell the piss. Somebody yeah. the suit. Around the corner, you have Tarantino around the corner, but like, yeah, that's some crazy shit, man. He's peeing in the suit. <laughs> Nick, you know. you Arnold peed in the uh, Mr. Free suit? What? Did Arnold pee in the Mr. Freeze suit? I didn't. I didn't okay. pee in that suit. It's my stunt double. <laughs> His stunt double. <laughs> <My> stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> and then he had to get in, and he was probably really mad, right? When you don't want to get in trouble for someone playing your stunt double. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't there when that happened. That was, that was him. Nick, you got a sweet setup behind you there. What do you got? Yeah. You got action figures back there? And boxes, and boxes, and a monitor, and stuff that needs to get thrown away, but I'm too lazy to unpack still, and it's been like two months. What action figures do you have behind you? Uh, well, the, f the, not the, I have mostly wrestlers, and then the top, the second to the top of the shelf, or, yeah, second to the top of the shelf is, uh, Marvel and Star Wars characters. Okay. You got the wrestlers over there, huh? Do I need, do I need the flip the camera and go show better detail or no? No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah, we, can see it. <laughs> we can see it from here. We just want to know what it was. All also, right. that siren, if you see it, that red yeah. thing. Yeah, that's neat. I put that on top of my car when I want fast food. Oh, that yeah, makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Didn't know you had Quick, it. I'm on my way to a homicide. I need three burgers, four fries, and two <laughs> and, and a Batman suit. And a Batman suit. No questions. And a Batman suit. All right, guys, now comes the time of the show where we do our lost gems. Dan, I'll let you first because I know you're prepared. <laughs> because I'm prepared. She's still yeah. doing it right now. Uh, Fox, 1986, I believe. I'm not sure on the exact year. I think it was 86. 
where Fox becomes a new network. Uh, it comes in locally on the Pennsylvania Philadelphia stations as Fox 29. Uh, we have such great shows as Married with Children, The Tracy mm -hmm. Allman Show, uh, The Simpsons, etc. Uh, no. They decide to go with a line of shows, including The Untouchables, the series, which was neat, and the show, which is my gem for this week, which was Werewolf. Werewolf 1987, I believe it is, was a 30-minute series uh, played on Sunday nights on Fox 29, and it followed the character Alex Cord, who, through obvious means, becomes a werewolf and is trying to break the curse and trying to not become a werewolf anymore. Uh, and the cool thing about this show was is that it was a little creepy, the werewolf uh, was relatively a scary werewolf, and it followed the same formula as The Incredible Hulk with Bill Bixby, where each week Alex ended up in a different town and he was able to help somebody in some sort of a struggle that was going on based on what was happening, but by turning into the werewolf. Uh, apparently, and it's not really explained too well, but... He's at this stage in his lichenism where he can still kind of control himself, much like the Incredible Hulk. If you remember the Incredible Hulk, because Bill Bixby was such a nice man and a good man and had good intentions, the Hulk, although more babyfied, had those same intentions. The werewolf in Werewolf was in the same fashion. Alice Cord was a very caring person. Uh, he wanted to help. And when he became the werewolf, he had that instinctual, I need to help this person or that person and take out everybody else. Um, it ran uh, one season. Um, it was starred, uh, the guy who played Alex Cord was in uh, soap operas before them, but the main star, the big star, was Scorzini, who was the, was the head werewolf that turned uh, Alex and this, he was played by Chuck Connors. Chuck Connors, who's well known as The Rifleman, which is one of my favorite TV serials uh, from back in the day. Uh, Rifleman, uh, I forget when that was like in the 1960s or 50, 1950s, I think it was. Um, great show. But Chuck Connors plays Scorzini, who's this like terrible werewolf. He's a sailor who goes into port and eats people, and then that's it. And <laughs> Alex is, spends his time trying to follow. Uh, Scorzini's trail to try and break the curse uh, only to find out that uh, Scorzini is not the uh, the head werewolf and has to move forward and move on. Uh, the show is really cool. It's fun. I will tell you the last episode of the season one, which was the last episode, is horrible. It is tremendously horrible and it's like, this is what I was left with. But I do recommend watching it. It's only 30 minutes long uh, per episode. You can catch it on YouTube. You can catch it on streaming services. It's a great show. Werewolf from Fox, 1987. Check it out. That's my hidden gem. Nick, um, you have a hidden gem? No. No? <laughs> no. no. Uh, it's, that's my panic thing. When I don't have an answer, just no. Uh, okay, I'll I'll go with my hidden gem. So okay. wait, what what's a hidden gem? Just to clarify, because I've never been, I never I don't know what uh, new to the show. Well, a hidden gem, a hidden gem is a show from back in the day that maybe not a lot of people remember or uh, got into or has seen a lot of popularity after it's over, but it was a great show and it's something uh, that hey, remind you, hey, this show existed. Check it out. Okay, well, bear with me on this one, because um, it, it it's it's Batman it is Batman connected. Okay. But there was this uh, freaking Scooby Doo episode, and it had Batman in it. I think they had a few episodes of it. And this is like the Adam West, I think Batman, if I right. remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And it was good actually. It was it was it was like when uh, Scooby Doo was like older, older, not like. How it was like in two thousand like ten or something or like like, like it was old. Scooby Doo. Yeah, kind of like the original, like yeah. when everything was more drawn out and not like animated like today. Like it was actually like drawn by hand. Right. And uh, 
I thought that it was pretty good during the. I thought it was good because I've watched four. Oh god, I'm lagging. Um, that's pretty much it. I just thought it was good. <laughs> All right, thanks, Nick. I, lost you. I love Nick. I, I, I'm wanting to know if anyone knows about that. Yeah, that's yeah my that's, question. That's pretty popular, Nick. It is. And Nick turned into Max Hedrum for about three seconds. Did you yeah, see that? I, 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 <laughs> that's not more like SpongeBob. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is the king of voices. We'll have to do a SpongeBob episode just for Nick. All right, here's my hidden gem, guys. Dragon's Lair. If anybody remembers the video game, I loved it. It was one of the first games that used laser disc. You walk into an arcade. Yeah, you'd walk into an arcade and you'd see all these like Pac-Man and asteroids and then you'd see Dragon's Lair and it would be kind of a big deal. Oh, Nick, you have a zapper. Dan, look at that. Nick has an original Nintendo zapper over there. Oh, look at that. Yes, yeah, for Duck Hunt. Yeah, for Duck Hunt. Hogan's Bam. here. For Hogan's I'm going to play Dan Hunt. Pow, pow. <laughs> So Dragon's, Dragon's Lair was actually a cartoon. A lot of people don't realize that they actually did a cartoon in 84 and 85 that aired on ABC. It had 13 episodes, so it was short-lived. Um, the animation couldn't live up to the LaserDisc game animation, so obviously they didn't weren't as successful. Plus, they couldn't have the big booby girl because it was Saturday morning. But those episodes, even though there's only 13 of those episodes, they still can play today. Um, they were on Toonami. And they are on Boomerang, and they do still come on. You can look them up. They are on um, YouTube as well. Um, the premise of the show was basically the same premise of the video game. It chronicles Dirk the Daring, who is the knight, who has to save Daphne, who is the princess against you know the evil kings and things like that. Um, before the commercial breaks were kind of neat because they left you hanging. He would get caught in a cliffhanger spot, and yeah. they say what would you do because just like the game it wanted you to try to make the choice to see what dirk would do when you came back from the commercial break so they tried to tie it into the game as much as they could possibly do it was a pretty big game it's kind of sad that the uh, the cartoon didn't do as good as the game but you just can't keep up with that kind of i thing. feel like i feel like it would do good but i know during the time period you couldn't do a certain thing it would be like if you want this to happen, press one. If you want this, that, the other, press, I don't know, three. Like, well, you know, if it worked like that, then people, I think, would get more into it. The interesting thing is when Dragon's Lair was out, you're also, it had, you had Captain Nemo was out. You had um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons was out. Space. Thundercats. Space, and the Space Pups was out at that time. Um Spider-Man is Amazing Friends, uh, which also had the Incredible Hulk, Pole Position, and this was in the era of where all the networks played cartoons on Saturday mornings. So there was such a barrage of cartoons for it to compete with. It wasn't like it was the only thing in its time slot for you. If you watch cartoons now, you got Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon. That's it. And or Disney, but Disney's not really a cartoon network. It's more of it's that. Uh, bad. It's not. And you're right, because it's a lot of it's live action. And with Nickelodeon, the cartoons on Nickelodeon are so different from the ones that are on Cartoon Network within reason. And then there's nothing else to watch anywhere else. So you don't get to see cartoons other places. So when I'm watching, if I'm a cartoon watcher, I got two choices. Whereas back then... How about it, Noel? We had seven, oh, eight, nine voices at the same time. Voices. You could get up on Saturday morning and flip around, and there was cartoons on every network. And you eating your cereal in yes. front of the TV. Yep, sit in front of the TV. And when cartoons was over, you had wrestling. So you pretty much had all day was set up for you. The interesting, the interesting thing I found out about this um, this Dragon's Lair cartoon is it had the narrator with it because it, what would you do with the narrator? Right. Um, and he narrated the beginning of the story and then before the commercial breaks, the guy's name was Clive Revel. That was the Clyde. that did that. Clive, Clive, not Clive. Clive. Oh. Clive Revel. Sorry, my thing's not picking up. It get, cuts you off sometimes. Oh yeah, what's well, Clive Revel? And the interesting I like Clyde. I know you do. My grandfather's name was Clyde. That's why. Um, so the um, the interesting thing about him is he actually played 
um, Oliver, he was Fagin on Broadway. So what? He, yeah, so he is a theater actor, a Broadway actor, a singer, and, and, and he played this role as this tiny little voiceover. He had this huge acting career on Broadway, and he played, and believe it or not, the guy is still alive. He still works. He's 88 years old. Good for him. Oh, God, he's Tony and Alfred. So, yeah, he's another Alfred. <laughs> he's another Alfred. And um, the lady that played Princess Daphne was also Rapture in Gem. Hi, Nick. Hi. Hi. Noel. Stop Philly Mean. What's going Stop. on? I'm just making a pit stop. We gotta, I got to leave again. Bella's got her belt test today. Oh, well, we're getting ready to wrap it up so you can take Danny with you if he wants oh, to. Oh, good. That's what I wanted. Perfect. Exactly. Sorry. <laughs> I'll send I know. you. I know. She's like, please, can you talk for two more hours? Yeah. But, uh, All right, guys. So that was my hidden gem, Dragon's Lair. Check it out on YouTube. Check it out on Kiss Cartoon or wherever you like to stream your cartoons. Dan, give me your plugs so you can go watch belt testing. I got to watch. I have one testing. question. Right. <clears throat> like this. Uh, you can go to djbproductions.com. That's where you can actually book me in the Delaware County area for any public or private event uh, as a DJ or MC. On there, you can also see the different shows. Which you're so distracting. Stop it. <laughs> 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 um, the um, the you can go on there and check out thatwaycoolwrestlingshow.com. You can see uh, DJ, uh, which is also my wrestling show. You're killing me. Stop it. <laughs> Kind of look away from the camera. Um, <laughs> it's a great wrestling show. Uh, tomorrow, actually, uh, we were in the studio to film the uh, last two episodes of this season. We're in season three on That Way Cool Wrestling Show, and then I'm going to take a month off. And then season four starts in um, roughly late September, early October. Uh, we also have DJs After Dark, which is a great show. And um, stop it. Just stop. You're plucking with your teeth. Um, my my plugs are going to go on longer. You realize? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sleep back at home. So DJs After Dark. All these are on Facebook. You can go to That Way Cool Wrestling Show on Facebook. You can go to DJs After Dark on Facebook. DJs After Dark, great show. It's getting a lot of rave reviews. Very funny. It's a world according to DJs. We talk about different DJ stories, different things according to ours because we're the kings of nightlife. So check that out as well. It's really funny. Uh, that's on there as well. Always on DJB Productions on YouTube. It's a silver head with sunglasses and big headphones. Uh, like it, subscribe it, share it to your friends. Check it out there. And then, of course, with my lovely friend, Noel Harlow Grasso, right here on the Big Vito brand on YouTube, Lost in Saturday Mornings, which is also on Facebook. Okay, Nick, do you... And, and you can not find me because... Problems. <laughs> You're Mr. Unknown. <laughs> Mr. Unknown. You can find my question mark. <laughs> Do you have anything you'd like to plug, Nick? Are you going to be doing uh, new episodes of Nick G? Soon enough. Um, I did have one question before we do cut it out here. All right, brother. What is it? What was the, You showed me this. Now, what's that one show where it has the kid gets sucked into the TV and it's like the video games? Captain N? That's what it was. I was thinking Captain that N, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> See, I educate my children on classic shows and cartoons. Like and Treat to the time of uh, Dragon's Lair. Yeah, I, exactly. Right at home. It was. I always make sure the kids know, you know, that, that they, I have you in the living room sleeping. She'll come in here and tell you everything you need to know about the 80s and 90s. Nick is educating the 80s and 90s. That's how they can be on the show because they know everything. Mr. Unknown from Parts Unknown. That's what they're calling you, Nick. Yes. <laughs> so, Nick G. I wonder, I wonder where parts I'm located in. Ayo, no. Oh, hey. hey, guys, you can check Nick G out here on multiple shows here on the Big Vito brand. If you look, he has his own show called Nick G Certified G because he is the only real certified G around. He's right? been slacking. Yeah, you're slacking. He's going to do more shows. Him and him and Uncle Devin are going to do some shows, I think. Devin uh, Sturgis is on the brand with us. Guys, 
please, please, please like and subscribe. It's somewhere in this region over here to the Big Vito brand. Share our videos. Let everybody know about us. You can also check us out on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google, and Spotify on the Big Vito brand audio where you'll have this show. You'll have Thug Wives. You'll have um, special audio from me and Vito. You have Virtue's brand of wrestling. We have blown our numbers away this month. We're almost to triple our numbers this month on our audio. On right. the audio we've had so it's been a great month for the big veto brand <laughs> nick you're killing me we are uh, we're we are happy to have you guys along with us in the ride thank you for waking up with us here on saturday morning check out harlowink.com you can catch up with me um on twitter and most social media is at reality capital t spiller why the capital t because i stole a lot of it also bigveto.com is updated every 24 hours with all new shows from the big veto brand if you're looking for a shirt we got merch there we got mugs we got everything spreadshirt.com are our friends spreadshirt.com slash the big yes. veto you can get all of your big veto merchandise dan what is your spread shirt address um yeah it's a spread shirt i don't know the address it's, <laughs> it's, 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 you don't un know something. it's under djb productions though i'm still trying to figure it out i have sh i have merchandise up there for danny j for d for that week of wrestling show djs after dark lost in saturday mornings there's a shirt on there for that as well um but it's uh, when you go to spreadshirt.com, it's under DJB Productions. Okay, so that's where you can get Dan and South Philly Neen uh, gear. Um, we will see you back here next week um, for another Lost in Saturday morning where we're going to be doing something other than Batman. Yay! It's Superman. Let's Put the live stream down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the live screen's coming down. Um, Dan, we'll see you again. And so will South Leaning and myself, along with Big Vito at Foxy Foxy on Wednesday night okay. for um, Thug Wives. Topic to be picked today and will be announced on Twitter. So we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Oh, see ya. Thug Lives has been brought to you by the Big Vito brand. Big Vito brand recorded live at La Grosso Grotto. Check us out at BigVito.com or on YouTube at YouTube.com slash the Big Vito brand.